Well, welcome everyone to this lovely Sunday afternoon here at First You See It's Second Life. And so let us let us start. Grace and peace be with you, my friends and familia, on this lovely Sunday. Thank you for coming. And welcome to First United Church of Christ and Conference Center in Second Life. My name is Yari Martinez Reina. I am one of the pastors in this community. And anyone you see with a minister's tag is an ordained UCC minister in real life. One of the most exciting things for me to share is that we are a real life church with real life standing in the Eastern Association, Southern California, Nevada Conference of the United Church of Christ, UCC. This month of June, we celebrate Pride Month. Pride Month is typically in June and dedicated to the celebration on and commemoration of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and inclusive of all of her siblings. Pride Month began after the Stonewall Riots, the beginning of our, the liberation of our people. Our church, Familia, is part of the Open and Affirming Coalition, or ONA, of the United Church of Christ. ONA, as we shortened the title, was founded in 1972, and it continues to advocate for our community to be equipped and celebrated. It is such a blessing to be part of a network connected with the common goal of sharing a message of hope and bearing witness to the Holy One's unconditional love. In fact, I love to say that you are welcome here and that no matter who you are or where you are in your life journey, you're welcome here. And as we like to say, it is good to be real in Second Life. Our service will be in voice and text. Music will be on the media viewer, so be sure that you have voice and media turned on. If you don't know how to do that, let someone know and we'll try to help. There will be a link in nearby so you can watch in, if in your browser if the viewer isn't working for you. If you like a bulletin for today's service, you can find it in the red binder in the back along with a donation bowl. One of the blessings and responsibilities that come with our being a real church with real life standing is that we, like all UCC churches, support the work of the national church, not only with prayer, but financially. So we greatly appreciate any offering you can make to support this ministry. If you prefer, donations can also be made on our website at firstucc.org. Org. So now I invite you, my friends, to join me as we start our service with a prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill this digital place, the homes and place where this is being heard, with your presence and touch us with your love. Thank you for loving us and for this place where we are all welcome home. We pray in your many names. Amen. If there are any announcements about the life of the church, please type them in the nearby chat during our gathering music. Thank you. 
your love is patient you feel my heart with so much peace and joy you're amazing you make my life feel brand new you're amazing you make my life feel brand new jesus you love me too much oh too much oh too much oh excess love oh jesus you love me too much oh too much oh too much oh excess love oh Jesus, you love me too much, oh. Too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, Jesus, you love me too much, oh. Too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh. Your love is kind.
Our reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 16 through 20. We have Jesus speaking here. I'm sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as the testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of the Father speaking through you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Joyous, for this reading. Today's uh, reflection, uh, it's on embracing all of me. When I think of what it means to be a Christian, I draw from my own upbringing what that meant. I think about my grandmother at church, how she would say a Christian must always be at church. Let's see if you can fill in these blanks. What do you think being a Christian means? By that, see if you can fill in the blanks, all right? I'll start, and then you just type what comes to mind when I say the following. A Christian should not drink, steal. Now you. A Christian should not lie, okay? A female Christian should not wear pants. That's what I was told. I ain't necessarily right, but you know. What are the what are other things you've you've heard? Hate neighbors, okay? Yeah. Have sex before marriage. A Christian should not gamble, play cards. Oh, I I didn't notice that I went and sat down, I'm sorry. <laughs> a pastor should not go sit down in the middle of a service. There you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. A Christian should not... Um, yeah. I mean, some of these statements are not entirely true, but you and I know that each religious group might have their guidelines that might be attached to a moral code. Often, there's a specific model that people try to follow. In fact, that is where progressive Christians and conservative Christians clash. There are theological debates that have lasted for centuries on celibacy, marriage, slavery, gay marriage, abortion rights, human rights, and the list goes on and on. The truth is that when we try to fit people in a carefully crafted boxes, we leave other people out. Every one of us, at one time or another, have tried to hold to a moral compass of our own. Perhaps it was handed down to you from your parents or your grandparents, your theological embedded beliefs, meanings you believe that way as a child and some of it has remained in your heart. Or you might be a new Christian and found a faith when you were older and you did your own research. And each of us struggle with the questions of what is the truth? What makes me a good Christian? What keeps me good with God? And who has the ultimate decision on what that really means? Perhaps even the idea of being given self control and free will is too big to comprehend has our lives been predestined i personally believe that each of us have the ability to make a choice in all we do 
Galatians 5.16 says that if we go by the Spirit of God, we will want the things of the Spirit of God. But what does that mean? At best, I could describe my spirituality as messy. But I can tell you that every day I'm committed to learning and trying again. I am human after all. But perhaps if we try to make a list of what being a good Christian means, it will help to be better. But keep in mind that just because that list worked for our lives, it doesn't mean others will embrace it. It's kind of like all those diets out there. There are so many of them. But our metabolism is different, and so what might work for me might not work for you. And that is the same way as we think about how to follow the one we call Christ. See, today's scripture mentions animals to invite us to think about and explore. Jesus mentioned these animals perhaps as a way to invite us to explore and connect to what he's trying to teach us. In the scriptures, we have a dove, a wolf, a sheep, and a serpent or snake. Perhaps we can make a bit of sense of these words of wisdom by looking at these animals and their spectacular characteristics. So let's start with the snake. There are 3,000 species of snakes on the planet. 7% are able to kill or wound a human severely. Snakes are covered with scales and as reptiles they are cold-blooded and must regulate their temperature externally. Anyone here afraid of snakes? I know I am. Maybe Jesus was saying to regulate your temperature when you get hot-headed, just kind of like the snakes. Just thought. Snakes hunt by using their tongues. They flicker it, and they smell their surroundings. They flicker out their tongue and helps them know where their food's nearby. But it also tells them if there is danger around their meal. Is getting that meal worth it? Maybe it's not about being worth it, but perhaps a desire to live and therefore wait for another meal to come around. Now that is wise advice from a snake. When I was starting in ministry up in the Dallas, Texas area back in the year 2000, I could not imagine that someone who has who is homeless or who was homeless or hungry could harm me if I ventured to go feed them on my own. Why would anyone want to hurt me if I'm feeding them? Well, let me tell you, I had some close calls and I learned my lesson. I could not even blame Jesus. Jesus, you said you would be with me always. And Jesus gently replied, I told you it is better to go in two. Why didn't you listen? Humanity is complex and maybe even more when they're hungry. Reverend Anna Chrysler wrote in a blog that most myths and legends and folklore in Judo-Christian scriptures connect the snakes or serpents with evil forces. I shall return to this in a minute. Because we need to talk about the dove. Doves feed from dawn to dusk. I like that. When they mate and lay eggs, both parents share duties. Yep. The male sits on the egg, too. How about that? Doves are kind in their sense of duty to each other that reminds us of our own calling to help and heal the brokenhearted. But the doves have a high mortality rate due to their sensible nature. I don't think a dove should be a Jesus recruiting animal. Just saying. Back to Reverend Anna Chris LeBlanc. In her blog, she also pointed out the juxtaposition of Jesus' example here when he talks about the serpent and the dove. And she adds that a little evil isn't that bad. She says, we all have a little bit of serpent and a little bit of dove in us. To ignore or to deny any or either part of ourselves is to diminish the fullest of our humanity. 
What do you think about this? As humans, both you and I have what I like to call a dark side. Now, I'm not a Star Trek fan. I'm a newbie. I know more about the Force than about this. But, I have been trying to watch the old Star Trek. And as I was watching an episode, this scripture came to mind. In Star Trek Season 1, Episode 6, titled The Enemy Within, which aired on October 6, 1966, and you can find it on Paramount, just saying. The episode reflected the story of Robert Louis Stevenson's short novel, The Case of Dr. Lojeklin and Mr. Hyde. Have you ever met someone with this personality? Well, in The Enemy Within, there is a malfunction in the transporter, and it splits Captain Kirk as he was beamed into the spacecraft. Captain Kirk has two sides that his crew gets confused about until they learn about the split. See, one is meek and indecisive, while the other one is sharp but violent and ill-tempered. Surely this is not what the scripture is talking about. Or is it? Humanity has the ability to be beautiful, kind, express compassion, love, and tenderness. But it also has a capability to react in anger, disappointment, hate, and violence. In this episode, Captain Kirk cannot function without the other, and he can simply kill this alter ego. So he is confused as they fix the transporter to unite them again. He asks, why does he need that other part of him? The one who he does not recognize. Spock says of himself that he is split in his own life. He says, my human self and my alien self is submerged, constantly at war with each other. But I survive because my intelligence wins over both and makes them live together. He tells Captain Kirk that his intelligence and his wisdom balances his two personalities, making him one extraordinary person. Do you struggle with something like this, friends? I've often tried to be someone else. I'm so ADD, but I want to be chill. I also want to be good at public speaking and more extroverted. Those are great leadership skills. Are there times where you feel that way? How about when someone hurts you and you just know how to get back at them? Oh, if I would uh, fill in the blanks. In Spanish, my mother used to say, Todos tienen cola que le pisen. Everyone has a tail that can be stepped on. In other words, we all have a weakness that can be exploited. And Jesus was not trying to tell us to be more than something else or to become someone else, but rather it was telling us to learn from the animal's personalities. Just as Reverend Anna was saying that each personality is a gift. My quirky ADD self is what makes me creative, energetic, and me. Sure, I strive to be a good leader, but instead of changing myself, I'm learning to embrace my qualities and balance my not-so-good ones. Jesus, in this scripture, gave us the honest truth about what it meant to be his follower. He was not saying, take this power to heal, take my fame and some thick snake skin, and use it and crush those who come against you. Nope. I believe he was saying that we were going into a danger zone by following him. Another animal mentioned in the scriptures are the wolves. Wolves are powerful as a pack. Alone, they have sharp teeth, they have speed and strength too. But they know that they must act as a pack to win. So they are smart and they stay in packs of five or six. The wolves howl loud to communicate and to intimidate and to send messages to warn others that they're getting close to their territory and they will defend it. Jesus said, I am sending you like sheep into the midst of wolves. 
plural, wolves. You mean like we're going in like a super sheep with powers? Nope, regular sheep. Sheep are clever animals. They're self-medicated, they have personalities, and they're emotionally high social animals. But for all their clever and smart traits, they have no defending skills. They are totally dependent on their caregiver. Again, this is not a good recruiting animal. In the example I gave you earlier about Captain Kirk being split in two, I want you to see his struggle. Captain Kirk was struggling in accepting that he had this evil self, and he wanted to be a gentle and a kind man. But he needed the other part of him that was shocked to make choices, to protect his crew, and make decisions not based on emotions. I don't want to be a sheep dependent on someone with no skills to defend myself. I don't want to be a dove with a low lifespan. And yet, we need those characteristics in our own lives to be the type of followers of Christ that welcomes those who are hurt. We need the kindness and the community of helping characteristics of both the dove and the sheep. We need those to be able to be gentle, welcoming, and a safe place. We need those characteristics to be that balm of wound as people find wholeness in their lives through Jesus. But Jesus says, you also need the characteristics of the snake. Can our inner self be, as Reverend Anna suggested, and exist with both human characteristics? And what keeps the other in check? The scriptures in Matthew talked about being dragged before kings. It talks about being flogged for being a follower of Christ. Is this true today? Are people persecuted for not being a certain type of religion or believe in a specific way? During the time of the scriptures, the Roman Empire was crushing people, hurting people, denying people their human rights, their basic needs, and their own dignity to exist. Is this true today? And we are called to follow in the way of Jesus, but to be smart and wise on how we do this. Jesus is saying, tap into that other side that can see evil for what it is. The side that can understand how the other team works. Jesus was not telling you to pay evil with evil or to become evil. But rather saying, stick your tongue out and sense if there is danger and go the other way if you have to. Martin Luther King Jr. said, showed his people a way to fight injustice by being tolerant and peaceful. There are stories of these siblings of ours sitting and learning to be spit on and yelled at and pushed around without responding. And I'm sure at first they were saying, how can this work? But today, we look at the civil rights movement and their struggles and learn from it as we ourselves are deep in our own human rights struggle as trans siblings. Friends, we all have the ability to respond, to act, and to give our tormentors just what they deserve. But Jesus is saying to be wise, because there's another way. In fact, he's saying don't worry about what to say, you're not alone. People will constantly try in the name of Jesus to divide us. Be suspicious of the opposition when the powerful and the privileged use their religion credit, their money, their status, their friends to hurt others. Be suspicious when humanity and those who the Holy One loves are persecuted for their gender identity, gender expression, or sexuality. Henry Nouwen said, people will constantly try to hook your wounded self, and they will point out your needs and your character defects your limitations and sins, and this is how they attempt to dismiss what God, through you, is saying to them. So live your life authentically, with pride and with joy. But I also learned to be smart, be wise, careful, and safe. Many will howl gathering packs around the little sheep, and they would try to take advantage or intimidate this poor little creature. 
But have you ever seen a herd of sheep running down the hill? You better move. Together we are stronger. And we learn that from the wolves. In conjunto, together, we shall prevail, praying, fasting, holding on to the promises that we are heirs of the Holy One, and we demand to be treated with respect and with dignity. Who do you think you're talking to? We deserve to live our life abundantly. We deserve, because we are wise as serpents. We know how to pay attention and open our ears and really hear what people are saying. We are wise and not falling into promises that are made to help but destroy others. We are gentle as doves, helping each other, living life with joy, cooing, flying, and knowing that life might be short, but the Holy One said that we are to enjoy every bit of it because we are loved unconditionally. We're like Captain Kirk, divided at times, but put together by the transporter of the Holy Spirit that makes us whole regardless of our circumstances friends following the way of jesus is not easy friends it was never promised but we having been given this wisdom taught to us by the creation that had much to teach us and if we pay attention so embrace your dual self and may you be whole as you live abundantly, making wise choices. Amen. We have come to this time of prayer where together we lift our prayers of joy and concerns for a community that holds each other in prayer. And today, I invite you while this song plays to type in your prayer request in the chat box. It's Get Your Hopes Up by Josh Baldwin. I feel the wind on my back 
our God is for us. He's brought us back to life. Amen, amen. Yes, Lord. We are together here to talk about and pray for each other as we continue in our service, but also in our lives. Uh, these prayers will continue with us through the week. Please know that we will continue to pray for each other as a community. In this night, we are joining in prayer with Lily, who has hit a bit of depression and has felt weak for a bit of depression for weeks, uh, often feeling like nothing matters. And we pray, oh, Holy One, may your light, your love, and your tenderness embrace Lily. And may your love be that balm on all the hurt, disappointment, and stress. Holy One of those in the shadows hear our prayer we join with pastor uh jamie as we hold accountable those in power hold on may your wisdom be upon them as they consider law making decisions that target the rights of the lgbtq plus people and i'm even going to venture and ask you holy one that just like saul just bring upon them where they can't sleep and they cannot make those choices. Let just go in there and just buck the heck out of them because we know that you are with us and laws that hurt others are not what you want for us. And so Holy One, thank you for standing with us and with our siblings and we ask that you help us to continue to hold on to that faith that if you are with us, nothing can stand against us. Holy One of the weak and the powerless we pray that you strengthen our faith in you. We join in prayer with Joyous and hold our sibling Monica as she goes through the stressful times in prayer. May you, Almighty, oh know what's going on, relieve the stress, and we as a community, we stand in the gap in prayer, committed to holding on to each other in love and in hope. Holy One of those in tough spots, 
be with us be with us and like the sun shine through and help us see hope where sometimes it is hard to see holy one we pray for lily's mom who is asking and praying that she will be all right holy one you know our bodies you know our minds you know if there's anything inside of us that needs your touch your tenderness your healing power your ability to make us whole in different circumstances and god we pray for lily and for this time and for mom oh holy one of healing hear our prayers and we join in prayer for and with doug for peace amidst of chaos holy one the bible says that you are with us through it all and that sometimes we don't know which way things will go, but that we can trust that with you, it will all be okay, even if sometimes we can't see it. Holy One, we also pray for Lily, asking for a vacation. Oh Lord, you know we all need one, especially the chaplains, but we pray that such vacation for Lily and for those who need some time off that you be with them as they rest for uh, Pastor Jamie in travels. We know, Lord, that as we stand with others in prayer and as chaplains and as pastors, that sometimes it takes its toll. And so you have invited us to be in the sacredness of Sabbath and to have self-care, which we are terrible as pastors. But we pray, Lord, that you continue to guide us as we seek such thing. And with Lily, Lord, that in the immediate future, um, the case that has been transferred to a different oncologist. And you know that when dealing with cancer and with any other illness like this, that it is sometimes difficult to look or see or even think or talk of hope. But you know that in those times of depth and sadness and anxiety and just complete chaos in our minds that you are with us and please help us see that even if it's hard and for Lily at this time that there will be a community and a group of people around to see that love, to see that tenderness but above all to know that we here at First UCC and Second Life are committed to be in prayer as we journey from a distance. Holy One who sees and knows and who understands more than we know. Holy One, hear our prayers. Those voiced here today Though spoken only in the depths of your heart. And those for which we have no words, we lift them all to you. Holy Lord, we give you thanks, O oh God, for those who mean so much to us, those to whom we can go at any time, those we with whom we can talk and keep knowing back knowing that they will not laugh at our dreams or failures those in whose presence is easier to be good those who by their warning gave have held us back from mistakes we would have made but above all we thank you for Jesus Christ Lord of our hearts and Savior of our souls in whose name we offer this Thanksgiving Amen Friends, let us go forth from this place into the world to find yourself a cause you can live for. 
and a love you can live into. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ spring up like living water fill your heart and flow through your life. Now I know friends that sometimes it is hard and difficult, but please know that you are not alone. May God be with you. And if you need to send us a note, any of our pastors and Doug or anyone, and we will continue to be in prayer with you through the week and as time goes by. So now let us dance. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a drill. It's the B.O.B. Bounce. And it's about to get real. Let's go. It's about to get real. Let's go. It's about to get real. Look out! 
and it's crazy. Look out, that's crazy, my sign. And it's crazy, me. Look out, that's crazy, my sign. And it's crazy, me. Oh, it's so crazy, I'm blessed, I am. It makes me wanna drop a tear. There's only one way to explain. God wanted me here. All my blessings, they come from you. All these blessings, they come from you. All my blessings, they come from you. Well, praise the Lord. I'm telling you, we just need to bounce because we're blessed. I'm telling you. Yes. Thank you so much for coming, for being here. That's right, Lily. We just got to bounce because we are sacred children of high. And I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. May you have a blessed week ahead. And may the sacredness of just God's love continue to fall on you. Blessings, my siblings. I'll see you all soon.